This is an informational video on the Bendix King VHF portable radio, which is used on incidents where communications calls for UHF or VHF channels. The video will cover radio familiarization, programming and using the radio, programming a command group, and radio care and maintenance. Refer to the times on the screen to skip ahead to any portion of the video you would like. It may also be useful to have a radio in hand so you can follow along. The radio has 25 groups, with 20 channels in each group for a total of 500 channels. The unit consists of the radio main body, the battery clamshell, and a detachable antenna. On the front of the radio, we have our speaker and mic. We have a backlit display, and we have a selectable keypad. On the side of the radio, we have a protective cover. This protects the contacts for the lapel mic and for cloning the radio. Under this, we have our push to talk button. This is the button that you will push when you're talking over the radio. On the top of the radio, we have a red transmit light that illuminates when transmitting, an amber light that illuminates when receiving traffic, two adjusting knobs, a code guard squelch knob, and our on off volume knob for turning on and off the radio and adjusting the volume level. We have a channel selecting knob for selecting one of the 20 channels in each group. And we have our three toggle switches. We have our director repeater, scan, and priority. The toggle switch can be switched down to hit a repeater or up for direct line of sight close communications. Turning the scan switch up allows the radio to scan the selected channels. Standard radio programming does not use priority channels. This section will cover programming and using the radio. To start programming the radio, we ensure that the radio is turned on and that all toggle switches are placed in the down position. There are 25 groups in the radio. Each group contains 20 channels. To change a group, first press pound. Then select the number of group you want and press enter. Once you are within that group, if your channel is tone selectable, you can change the tone simply by pressing the tone number for the repeater that you're trying to hit. To select one of the 20 channels within the group that you're in, Use the channel selecting knob. You can turn it left or right to select the channel that you desire. To adjust your squelch, turn your squelch knob just to the point where you begin to get feedback, and then back it off just to the point where the feedback dissipates. Consult your crews for more on squelch and code guard. A channel that is in your scan list will have a solid scan box in the display screen. As you can see, we have several channels in our scan list right now. To add an unscanned channel, simply press the Enter key. You will see in the display screen that we now have a scan box. Once you have all the channels that you want to scan programmed into the radio, on the top of the radio, flip up the scan toggle switch. You will then see on your display screen a scan box that is flashing. This means that all the channels that are on your scan list are currently being scanned. Flipping the scan switch down takes your radio out of scan and now you can add or delete more channels. To delete a channel from your scan list, press the clear button. You will see that there is no longer a scan box on this channel. This is indicating that this channel is no longer in the scan list.
The radio has a keypad locking feature. This is good to know if you ever want to lock your keypad to prevent unwanted key pushes or to troubleshoot a keypad that's not working. Holding down the function key for approximately two seconds will lock the radio. To allow you to use the radio again, hold down the function key for two seconds and you'll see that your radio is unlocked. Selecting group 15 in your radio will take you to the programmable channel. This channel is used when cloning the radio and it also contains the weather channel. When using the radio, depress the push to talk button and pause before speaking towards the mic. If the antenna becomes loose, turn it to the right to tighten it. Do not ever pull, tug, or carry the radio by the antenna. In this section, we'll cover programming and using a command group. A command group is a custom group with channels you can add from multiple groups within the radio. Once you have a command group, it acts like any other group. Starting with a clear command group, the first thing to do is to add channels. To add a channel into the command group, you press the star key. To start building our command group, we're going to add MVU1. We have MVU1 as our channel selected. We'll press star, and this has added it to our command group. From this group, we'll also add CDF command 2. CDF TAC 5, CDF Air to Ground 2, and we'll add an Air Guard channel as well. Now we'd like to add a channel from another group. We're going to switch groups. We'll go to group 15, and within this group, I'll select the weather channel, and I'll add this to my command group by pressing star. I've added multiple channels from multiple groups and created a command group. Now I need to enter that command group. Pressing pound twice gets me to my command group, and then I'll press enter to enter into this group. Now that I'm in my command group, you can see that I've created a group custom with just the channels that I wanted from multiple groups. Now this group acts like any other group within the radio. I can scan, I can clear channels from my scan list, and I can change tones on my tone selectable channels. Not only can I add channels to my command group, but I can delete them as well. Confirming we're in our command group by the command box, I'm going to delete this channel by pressing star one time and that deletes that channel from my command group. Now you can see as I scroll through that channel is no longer in my command group. Clearing all channels from the command group can be done by holding down on the star key. I'm within my command group, I'll hold down star, and I've cleared all channels out of my command group, as you can see. I can then enter back into my groups, and if I want, I can build another command group, or leave the command group empty. In this section of the video, we will cover radio care and maintenance. Removing the battery from the radio first requires you to turn the radio to the side, Take note, we have a flatter side and a curved side with a metal tab in the middle. We'll push this tab up and twist either way to remove the battery clamshell. Then, pushing in on the middle portion of the battery housing, we can move the outer clamshell of the radio and we have nine AA batteries. When replacing the battery clamshell, we'll first ensure that we have all nine batteries. Then taking the outer clamshell, we'll note we have a curved side and a flatter side. Make sure you line this up with the curved side and flatter side on the battery housing. Push down until you hear a snap 
and you have no gap on the bottom and it's flush on the top. On the battery housing, we have metal contacts. These allow the battery to be replaced in multiple directions. Line up the metal contacts, twist, and ensure the metal tab snaps back into place. The battery should be secure when properly replaced. To clean the radio, ensure we have mild soap, a tablespoon, a bucket to hold a gallon of water, a lint-free cloth, and a mild scrubbing brush. We'll take one tablespoon of mild soap and mix it into a gallon of water for a washing solution. Clean the outside of the radio using your cleaning solution and brush. Avoid the radio contacts and make sure you do not over drench the radio or let water sit in the electronics. Dry the radio and clean the radio contacts using your lint free cloth. When cleaning the radio, avoid submerging the radio in water and do not use hydrocarbons or harsh chemicals to clean the radio. This concludes the training video. Regular use and training with your crews will help ensure radio proficiency.